Hi, in this video, we'll do some of the conformational analysis of disubstituted cyclohexanes. So when the cyclohexane is disubstituted, it will have so many different isomers that are different molecules, depending on first the position of the substituent group, and second, the position of the substituent group, whether they cis or trans, with respect to each other. So here in this lecture, we'll take a look at a few of those. So we we'll do analysis of a cis 1,2 disubstitution. We'll also do a trans 1,2 disubstitution as well. And please recognize that cis 1,2 versus trans 1,2, these are two different molecules. And we also do another example looking at the cis 1,3 disubstitution as well. So again, there's many other different uh, other isomers that are possible that and we'll only take a look at some of those examples. And the goal is for us to learn how to calculate the destabilizing energy in each of the uh, conformation of these different types of disubstituted cyclohexane. So let's get started. Here, the cis 1 2 disubstitution, and let's put the methyl group on them. So this is basically 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. And in this case, the two group assist with respect to each other. So let's start by drawing the first chair conformation of this cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. So let's draw, and you can get started by drawing any of the chair conformation. So in this case, let's slant this to the right. So when we do this again, we'll be putting a dot, and that will be one dot right there. And this will then be the other dots. And now we connect the dots. And now we have a beautiful chair. And now let's put in the group. So let's label this first. Let's make this carbon one. And this carbon two, three, four, five, and six. And we can put this number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, it does not matter how you label the number, because in the end, it's all the same thing. It will be different rotations of the same conformation. Now, so in this case right here, the carbon number one has this C3 group point up. So then we will have to go to carbon number one and put this methyl up. And when this is up, it has to be on the actual location. And there is that CS3. So this would then mean there will be hydrogen right here that is pointing at the equatorial position. And now moving on to the carbon number two. So now carbon two has a methyl group that is now also point up. So make sure when we go to this carbon that we put this up, but not down, because that would then be a different molecule, not the same molecule anymore. So in this case, for position number two, the up position would then be the equatorial position. So there it is. And now that means the hygiene will then be pointing down. Now let's put in the hygiene in the rest of this molecule. So for this one, the equatorial, the axle will be right there. And here is the equatorial. And for number four, this will be the equatorial. And this will then be the axle. And for number five, this is the equatorial. And this will then be the axle. And for number six, this will then be the equatorial. And here is the hydrogen equatorial so make sure you know how to put in and be feel very comfortable comfortable putting in all of the groups in here and now let's calculate its energy so in this case right here we will then see the following let's see if we can recognize any type of interaction we have learned previously so in this case we do see this methyl group when it facing now we're located at the axial location. It can come in and impact with the two hydrogen, right? That they are three or the bond away. And this is the A13 diaxial interaction that we have learned already. So this have that A13. So let's put it down. So ED equal to we have an A13 diaxial interaction between a CS3 group and the hydrogen. Now each of this E.9. So in this case, overall, all this each of this is 0 0.9 and 0.9 kilocal per mole. So adding both of this together, this would then equal to 1.8 kilocal per mole. And 
And now let's see if this molecule right here will have any other types of interaction. So here in this case right here, we also see the following. This methyl group and this methyl group right here, the bond angle between them when we look across this bond, they are gauge with respect to each other. And we have learned already that the gauge interact uh, the position of this it also have steric energy associated as well so there you go that would then be the other value so here in this case right here you have this gauge interaction we get this two cs3 group a 60 degree from each other and so therefore let's also include that and so this got right here it been labeled as follows so we're going to label this as a g and now we have a one two followed by cs3 so this means g here stop for a gauge interaction between two groups that are one and two bond away and it involving cs3 so that's how we can label this so this plus a g one two cs3 and this interaction between these two metal groups that are gauge with respect to each other, we have learned already, and we saw that this value right here is 0 0.9 kilocal per mole. And in the end, when we add all of this together, this would then equal to 2.7 kilocal per mole. And now, and so basically, and all than that, there will be no other interaction that would be significant. So this CS3 group right here and this hydrogen, it do not interact with each other. Okay, so only when it's a metal group that it will be significant. Because when this interact with each other, it will be considered to be zero. So overall, this is what we would have. Now when we, so let's now flip this. So because this E, well, we don't know. How much would be the energy of the author con confirmation? But then right now we do see that this has 2.7 kilocal per mole altogether. So let's see if this ring can flip, check and flip to produce a more stable confirmation. And now let's draw the author chair. So on the previous chair, we slant this to the right. So now when we draw the author chair confirmation, we need to slant this to the left. So that's what we would have. So make sure this two line right here are perfectly parallel, out and the top line slanted to the left a little bit compared to the bottom line. And now again, put in the dots. So once we keep drawing this a lot, we'll be, we can put in this dot right here fairly quickly. And now connect all of this. And this will then be the other chair, the flip chair of it. And again, this let's label the carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now let's put in the group for the carbon 1. Right now on the left, on the metal, so the metal group right now is pointed up in this confirmation. So on an axle, so on the right, it will now become equatorial and still be pointed up. So equatorial and still point up. That where that metal group would go. And now here will be the hydrogen and a carbon number two. So this methyl group or this CS3 group right here, it is now facing it at the equatorial position and it point up. So on when it flip, it now will be the one point up right over here. So there you go. And now for the rest of the other position, let's put them in. So yes, it is important to put in the other hydrogen as well so that way we can see if we have that a13 diaxial interaction or not and now once we drew this in already let's see if we can recognize any of that a13 diaxial interaction and yes we do have it here is this cs3 group at the axial location and now one two three bond away we have that hydrogen and then one two three go away we also have that hydrogen as well so you can see this also interact as well so 
we do see that in this case we do have an A13 diaxial interaction between the methyl group and the hydrogen. And this value is exactly similar to the value on the order confirmation. And that equal to 1.8 kilocal per mole. Now let's see if this one right here has any other type of interaction. And we also observe the gauge interaction as well. This C is 3 and this C is 3. So this is one you point up and this one is also up but slanted. So basically the bond angle between them when we view them using the Newman projection it would be the 60 degree from each other. So that would then give rise to that gauge interaction as well. And now the, the two groups are one and two bond away. So we also have a gauge one and two involving the methyl group. So we can put CS3 or we can put CS3 and CS3. And overall, this value is 0.9 kilocal per mole, just like the previous value. So in this case, overall, this would then equal to 2.7 kilocal per mole altogether. And that would be the total destabilizing energy for these two different conformations for cis 1 2 di substitution. So in this case, we can see that both of this conformation right here, both of these chairs, have similar destabilizing energy. So therefore, they will be the same and they're equally stable. So the difference in destabilizing energy equal to zero. So both of them can exist. So therefore, it go back and forth with 50% of the time it will exist in this conformation and the other 50% of the time it will exist in this conformation right here. Now, let's now analyze what happened when we have a 1-2 di substitution in that at trans. So again, so the position of the groups are the same thing, one bow, one, two, but now the position are different where one A, uh, so in this case trend means that the two substitution group are on the opposite side of the ring. Just like what we would see right here. So let's do an example and let's see what happened. So again, this molecule in the previous molecule where the two group assist, they're completely different molecule. Okay, so yes, the position do matter and they cannot rotate. So again, these are not similar molecule and this molecule cannot become this molecule and vice versa. Because to be able to do that, we have to break a bond first and then put connect, reconnect them again in a different way in order to get them to be the same thing. And that would then cause a chemical reaction to happen right there. So they are different molecule. Okay, please remember that. Cis cannot rotate into a trans. And now let's analyze the two chair conformation of the trans 1 2 di substitution. And again, let's use methyl group in this case. So let's get started by drawing the first conformation. And again, let's start by drawing two slanted lines and put in the dots. And now connect the dots. So it's important to draw this chair right here correctly because when we draw this correctly, it will be easy for us to see the position of the different groups. And again, let's label this. Let's label this to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And now on the carbon 1, we have a methyl group. And right now, this is point up. So we go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So in carbon 1, we have a CS3 group, the point up, and that has to be axial. And that means the hydrogen right here will be pointing down. And now on the CS3 group on the carbon 2, this is pointing down. And so the down position here, it has to be axial, right? So because we see that they have to be pointing down. And the down position of this carbon 2 has to be axial. So there it is. And that means the hydrogen right here will then be equatorial. And now let's put in the rest of the other group. On all of the carbon. So there we go. And now let's analyze this confirmation to see how much energy that we would have. So here in this case, 
we again see an A13 diaxial interaction between this metal. So again, anytime we have a substituent group that is on the axial location, we should be paying attention to that A13 diaxial interaction. And in this case, it no interact with this two hydrogen. And each of this is 0 0.9, so overall, this we have a 1.8 kilocal per mole due to this A13 di interaction. So the ED or total will equal to first an A13 diaxial interaction between the CH3 and the hydrogen. And now let's see if we have anything else. Now, so when this two of the substituent group are one, three, one, two with respect to each other, they could have that uh, gauge interaction right there if the bond angle between them a 60 degree. But in this case right here, the angle from here to here would be 180. So therefore it does, and so basically they're anti with respect to each other. And we saw previously that, so this is very similar to the anti butane one, two, four carbon away, and we can see that they have zero kilocal per mole. So in this case, there's no other. So adding all of this together, this equal to 1.9 kilocal per mole. And that will be the total destabilizing energy for this confirmation. And now let's flip this to see if it can flip to produce the other confirmation that will be more stable. And let's do that. So again, when we draw this one, we can, in this case, we start out by drew the line, the lines sliding to the right. So here we need to be sliding this to the left. So let's make them better, make them perfectly parallel. And again, the dots, so one dot will be right here. And now connect the dots. And we have ourselves the other flip chair. And again, this will be carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five, and carbon six. On the carbon number one, initially on the other chair, we have this CS3 group pointing up, and this is axial. So therefore, when it flip, this will now become up, but now equatorial. So that's where that hydrogen would go. And as for the CS3 on the carbon two, right here, so this one here, this E, um, axle down. So it would then become equatorial and would still be down. And now the hydrogen would be up here. And now let's put in the author, the rest of the hydrogen. And again, it's really important that we draw our chair correctly so that way it's so easy for us to put in all of this group and now let's analyze this so here in this case right here in this confirmation so we can then see the bow of our CS3 group so this is CS3 group right here this is now equatorial and this is equatorial so it do not have that A13 diaxial interaction right there that we, uh, that we saw on the other confirmation but now this two CS3 right here, again, they're two carbon away from each other. And in this case right here, you can see that their bond angle, when we look through this bond, they'd be 60 degree from each other. So they basically would have that gauge interaction between this CS3 group. On the other, conf other confirmation, we do not have that gauge, but here we have it. So, but, uh, so let's calculate that. So in this confirmation, the total ED, it has this gauge one two diaxial interaction between the CS3 and the TCS3. And now this gauge interaction right here, in this case right here, it equal to 0 0.9 kilocal per mole. And this is a value we've seen already. So the total for this equal to 0 0.9. kilocal per mole and that's all that we would have so here in this case in comparison between these two confirmations then we would see that oops or well actually we actually miss out one thing very important 
So the previous one over here. So this is correct. This is now have a total of 0.9 kilocal per mole. There's actually one interaction that we miss on the other one. So again, this CH3, and this CH3 right here is now facing down. Remember, it would also interact with this two hydrogen that are equatorial as well. So in, in the end, we actually has up to two of this interaction. So my apology for pointing, for forgetting to see that a bit earlier. So this, we have two of it. And therefore, this one right here will then equal to 3.6 kilocal per mole for this confirmation. And this one right here is only 0.9. So in the end, the difference in destabilizing energy between these two molecules is that 2.7 kilocal. With this one right here, it's lower. So therefore, this would then be the more stable confirmation. So the more stable confirmation is for the two CH3 group to be on the equatorial position. And we get this one more stable right here by a bigger amount we would expect that perhaps maybe 99 percent of this molecule would exist in this confirmation and one percent to be in the other confirmation and now let's do a one three die substitutions and again let's do a cis we can also do a trans two but let's do an example of a cis and so again, let's start by drawing the first confirmation. So that the chair, and let's label this one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the carbon number one, it is now pointing down. And that means the hydrogen here will be pointing up. And now on the carbon number two, there's no methyl group. So, but let's draw in the hydrogen connected to that. And now on carbon number three, we have that methyl group. In this case, there's a point down. So this has to be at the equatorial location. Make it the axle will be pointing up. And now put in the rest of the hydrogen. So there you go. And now let's analyze this confirmation to see if we have any significant interaction, destabilizing interaction. Okay, so we can see that uh, there's really none that we recognize here in this case right here. Okay, well, there's actually none. So this confirmation that we started out with have zero kilocal per mole. Because it does not have that got one two interaction that we mentioned send the two methyl group are up to three bond away one two three carbon away and again uh, so the hydrogen the one three hydrogen they do not interact with each other because hydrogen are too small and this interaction between this hydrogen right here this is also not significant as well and is zero so now let's analyze the order flip confirmation so when we flip this, and again, because we start slanting this to the right, now we need to stand, slant this to, to the left to create the other chair confirmation. And this would be one dot, and this would be the other dots. And now connecting the dots, that's what we would have. And now let's put in the label one, two, three, four, five, and six. On carbon one, so right now we have a methyl group. This is the group E point down equatorial. So on D, when it flip, this now will be point down and become axial. And the hydrogen will be over here. And on carbon number two, there's only hydrogen. But let's draw them out. And on carbon three, right here, this is three group E now equatorial and point down. So it will become then axial and point down on the order confirmation. And now that hydrogen will go right there. And let's put in the rest of the other group. And again, make sure we put down all the groups so we can recognize all the interaction. 
And after we have drawn this out already, we are now beginning to see something that can potentially be really significant. So here in this case right here, we have the two methyl group that are three carbon away from each other that interact in. Now, we can see that if there is a high, they both can interact with this hydrogen, right? They can both interact with this hydrogen right here. But in addition, this two cis3 group right here would interact with each other would even more. So that a new types of interaction that we haven't seen previously. So in this case right here, let's calculate this. Each of this interaction between the hydrogen and the CH3 group, each of this is 0.9. And from here to here, this is also 0.9 as well. And that's the value that we have seen already. And in addition, there is a new interaction here that is due to the interaction between this two CH3 group. And in this case, this value right here is 3.6 kilocal per mole. So I'll show you where I get that value in a little bit. But then we can see there's a lot of interaction in here. And so the total ED for this equal to the following. We would then see 0.9 from here, and we have two of it. So 0.9 plus 0.9 plus 3.6. So overall, this equal to 5.4 kilocal per mole. And in comparison to the other one that had zero kilocal per mole, you can see this would then be the most, the most stable one. And so let me now show you where I got all this value from. So all of this interaction right here has been calculated and studied, and they have been found to be have this types of energy in them in here. So here in this case right here, when we have the uh, this two alkyl group interacting and they're one, two, three carbon away. And again, this is called the one, three diaxial interaction. Okay. So maybe this would be, uh, so that here it is between the two alkyl group. So if one of the group is a CH3 and the other one would to be a CH3 as well, then this value for it. So when the two alkyl group, they both CH3, and they have the A13 diaxial interaction with each other. That will be 3.6 kilocal per mole. So we'll go on back here. We have what we have here will then be the A13 diaxial interaction between a CH3 to a CH3. And this equal to 3.6 kilocal per mole. And so we have here this, and we also have here the A13 diaxial interaction between CH3 and hydrogen. And we have up to two of this, one right here and the other one over here. And each of this is then 0.9. So that's how we can do conformational analysis.